Hi, Nathan Cole here, and today I'm going to be teaching you a technique. It's one of those one weird tricks that actually works. I call it Mind the Gap, and it's all about left hand tension, getting rid of it, increasing speed, evenness, accuracy, the whole thing. I want to tell you that I'm going to be drawing from a little book called Practice Essentials. It's free. You can download it. Just go to the link in the description. I'm going to be taking some of the material from that today, so make sure you grab your copy. So, Mind the gap. If I'm playing the first etude of uh, Shradiak, etc., etc., it goes on for a while. Great etude, though. Heifetz played it every single day. Food for thought. If I'm playing that and things are getting a little tight, maybe I feel that they're getting tight, tense. Um, Evenness not there. Can't get it up to speed. I want to be looking at tension here. Now there are two main areas here in the left hand where we can pick up a lot of tension and we can knock them out both at the same time with this mind the gap technique. So right where we hold the instrument between the thumb and the first finger, that's a big one. Squeezing here and also between the first and the second finger, squeezing there, bunching up those two fingers. Those two spots, those two causes, the, they've, they've caused more problems for violinists over the years probably than anything else, a possible exception of neck and shoulder stuff there. So what happens is that costs you speed, can't play as fast. Even this, I mentioned, accuracy, the pitch, when your fingers are tight, they don't tend to go down in the same places, and even if they do, it's possible to, to practice that in, to build in the right places over time, but then you're just baking in that tension. That's terrible. Stamina, something like this, when you, <laughs> it's a whole two pages, uh, etc. Uh, you never make it to the end. And if by some miracle you do and you learn to play that way, eventually you're just begging for injury. Um, sad, but true. I've seen it before. So, for all those reasons, you want to get rid of that. Now, how can you self-diagnose if you are carrying tension there? Well, one easy way to tell, do you see this V, this little V-shaped gap when you're playing? If you don't, if it's closed up like that, that's one good sign. So, if it's closed, here, and that violin's just sitting there. That's one great sign you got tension between thumb and first finger. If you don't see any daylight between the first and second fingers, see how here I can fit the button of the bow right in these bass knuckles there. Um, if instead it's closed up like this and there's no daylight, it's possible to play a whole step between them but it's very tight. What I want is to see a little bit of that daylight there. So if you're not seeing any of that, that's another good sign. How about just feeling? Does your thumb feel dead tired? And this is a big one. If you look while you're playing something intense, if you look at your thumbnail and you see that it's all white because all the blood's been driven out of it from the squeezing, that's another it's another good indicator, bad indicator, I should say. If your first finger's super tired on the side, if you can feel that it's pressing up against the neck all the time. Now, by the way, I have contact with the first finger to the side of the neck virtually all the time, but I'm talking about really digging in, pressing. If you see a giant red mark on there, another indication. Finally, if that palm muscle here, the big muscle in the palm, if that's fatigued, overly fatigued, I should say, um, as you're playing even simple things, that's another great indication that you're carrying tension. It should feel engaged, but, but pretty soft as you're playing. If it feels rock hard and tires out too quickly, all of that. So that's how you can diagnose in a physical sense, playing sense, a musical sense. We already talked about getting slow in passage work, right? <laughs> If stuff is not moving, flowing, 
you don't want that. If you're able to play evenly at a slow tempo, but it gets uneven as things get faster, that's another great indication that as you add speed, you're probably also adding tension and that evenness doesn't want to stay with you. So fine when it's slow, uneven, uh, clumsy when it gets fast, that's a good, again, the bad indication. And finally, if you're finding that the third and fourth fingers, remember we want to matching with those open strings, let's say if we're on the A string, three should match with D, four should match with E. If that's true when it's slow, but when things get fast, they get lower and lower and lower, they're probably being shrunken in with all that tension. So what we want instead, showed you that nice area there. We want to see that, see some daylight. And in a healthy position, that first finger is going to look a little bit reached back, not exaggerated like that, but a little bit in that direction. If instead the one looks completely sort of neutral and comfortable, unless you have a very long three and four, they're never going to make it. And this is going to tighten up. So healthy hand, that one is reached back a bit. Okay, so great. What's the solution? What's the trick? <laughs> what we're going to do is go on the wrong side of the tracks. So this is going to look and feel a little strange, but stay with me. Instead of this normal playing position, I'm going to take that first finger and move it right around to the other side of the neck. So now the violin is sitting between one and two. Wrong side of the tracks, wild side, whatever you want to call it. Now, notice immediately how the thumb suddenly is taking basically no role at all. That's good. For now, we want the thumb just out of the way. So automatically, there's going to be no squeezing between thumb and first finger. We've eliminated one problem. There also, if we stay aware of it, should not be any squeezing between one and two. In this position, it's, it's going to be hard for you to want to really squeeze between one and two, um, mostly because it feels <laughs> so strange and uh, it, it's, gonna, it's actually going to hurt if you really squeeze there. So um, we've also eliminated that source of tension. That's great. We've got that automatic space now, that daylight between one and two. It's that daylight that I was looking for here. Now we've got it automatically. This is doing a number of good things for us. Notice also how in this strange position, uh, the first and second fingers are both pointing toward the bridge or, you know, toward you when you're in playing position. If you drew little faces on your fingernails, Suzuki style, those faces would be pointing right at you. That's great too. It's promoting this open hand. This is what I would call an open hand in playing. This would be a closed hand. We want it as open as we can get it. That's happening automatically in this position. But you can't really play like this, can you? Or can you? Um, what we're going to do is still play a little bit of that Schwediak. Put your one on the G string, okay, instead of the A string. So, and, you know, find it where it's in tune. The two, three, and four will go on the A string as usual. Now it may take some maneuvering of the hand to find where that is. In fact, let's start with those fingers. Feels pretty strange, huh? Now with those three fingers down, find your one on the G string. It's a little too high, isn't it? Once again, reaching that one back. This is gonna promote some healthy habits here. Huh? Great. Thumb is completely out of it. I love it. So now let's play some Schrediak. For every first finger, we're going to use the one, but on the G string, so we're not going to hear it. So you could go through the whole etude like this. Do a little quick check. How's everything feeling? 
presuming nothing between thumb and one. This palm muscle is nice and soft, I bet. Between one and two, it's going to feel a little strange. Hopefully, you're not feeling any kind of squeezing like that. So, one thing I want you to notice, does your hand feel higher or higher on the fingerboard, meaning closer to you than normal? I bet it might, and that's an indication that you may all along have been playing in first position a little bit too low and reaching up with three and four. This may be telling you that first position is actually a little higher than you thought and you could be reaching back a little bit with one and perhaps two. So you can go through as much of that as you want. I do this every now and then as a little refresher. Let's go back to it. We've automatically got daylight between one and two. How about between two and three and three and four? Yeah, I'm seeing a little bit there. So can, can my two and three lean away from each other? Can you practice opening and relaxing that space there? So even though two and three have a half step between them, we can still open a little daylight there. I love that. So. When I want to get back to the right side of the tracks, I'm going to leave two, three, and four down. Now to maneuver one, back to where it goes. And when I do that, I'm going to put it on the D string so that I can hear where it is, okay? So back goes the first finger around. So now I know it's in the right place. I'm going to tune the octave then. Great, great. If I needed to, I could reach back, but it's already in the right place thanks to the gap technique. Does this feel higher, again, higher than normal to you for first position? If so, I'd love for you to get used to that <laughs> feeling, because this is first position, believe it or not. Check this V. Is it still there? I hope so. Check for daylight between one and two. Is that there? Bonus points, daylight between two and three. Now play again. Is your thumb just as neutral as it was before? Is it hopefully not playing an active role? Because that would be great. Go for as much speed as you can get, as I just did. Yeah. And if that's comfortable, play as much of this etude as you like. As I said, Heifetz did the whole thing every day. Um, and see how far you can get without feeling that tension that perhaps you were carrying before. Anytime you need, just reset. Go back to the wrong side of the tracks. Bring it back. I do this quite often to reset. So, summing up, there's a related technique that, that sometimes I've used and I've seen taught where to get the thumb out of the way, to get rid of that tension, you kind of tuck it under like this. That works too. It's less secure in terms of holding the instrument, so some people get nervous with that. It's also not a particularly comfortable position for the thumb, so that's why I prefer this Mind the Gap that we've gone over today. Now, when you start playing, quote, hard passages, difficult music, you're probably going to find that old habits want to come back, right? If you were a squeezer like this before, or here, or both, that's probably going to want to happen in that tough music. Expect that and just gradually work this back in. You can, you can use this technique in whatever practice, whatever passage you might be practicing. And so just expect that it'll take a little time and some patience to get the new habits even in the more difficult music. Okay, so be patient with yourself. Lots more practice tips in that free practice essentials guide, so do pick up your copy, link in the description. It's free. Pass it on to your friends too. Let them join in on the fun. All right, I'll see you next time.